What is going on, squad? My name is Brian Mark. I'm the host of the number one podcast for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow a successful online business without spending any money on ads, a website, or a funnel. I built my fitness business to over $50,000 a month over the course of four years. And in the last two and a half years, I've worked with over a thousand online coaches and a hundred of them have hit $10,000 a month. Without further ado, let's get into today's episode. What is going on online fitness coaches? Welcome to another episode of the Change Lives Make Money Online Training Podcast. This is the number one show for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow a successful online business. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about failing at full speed. Now, before we get into the episode, I just want to remind you guys that we are coming up on the end of June. And the end of June equals a $1,000 cash prize giveaway. Say what? So if you guys want to be entered to win $1,000 cash, this includes you, Clubhouse. All you need to do Screenshot any podcast episode, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at BMarkFit. Let me know that you're tuning in and you're automatically entered to win $1,000 cash. So uh, today's special for me and I'm excited about today because today marks the uh, end. Well, I guess yesterday was the end of my young and ambitious mentorship program for youth. Uh, For those of you guys that don't know the story, I'll kind of give you guys a 60 second rundown. So everybody knows about my drug addiction by this point, if you're following me on social media. So I struggled with a drug addiction eight years ago. And when I overcame my addiction, I wrote down this vision that I was going to accomplish with my life. And one of the things that I wrote down in the vision was that I was going to own a gym. And then the next part of that vision was when I owned a gym, I was going to use it to mentor youth. And so when I purchased Iron Energy Gym, what I did is I started this youth mentorship program. And this was about 16 weeks ago. This just came to a close and I just sponsored a uh, youth in Kelowna for $10,000. I gave him $10,000 towards post-secondary education. And so today's a special day for me because I'm feeling the, I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling the love. uh, I'm feeling the gratitude of knowing that I'm in a place in my life where I get to give back on that level just makes me so fucking happy. So I'm feeling good today, feeling excited, and I'm really ready to deliver this podcast to you. So let's talk about failing at full speed. And what does that actually mean? I want to bring you guys back to when I used to do fitness competitions uh, when I was a uh, when I was competing and I wanted to win my pro card. So I started out when I was I started out competing when I was 21 years old. And as a fitness competitor, like I'm the type of person that when I do something, I want to do it to the best of my ability. I've always been like that, even when I was younger, even when I played video games. Like I didn't just play video games; I wanted to fucking master the game. And so when I played football in high school. I wanted to become the captain. And then when I started competing, I wanted to win my shows. And so I remember when I was competing, the first show I ever did, I did just for fun. And uh, I was just like entering the show because I just wanted to kind of compete and put myself out there. So after I entered the fitness competition and after I did it for fun, I ended up placing seventh. And there was 13 athletes. So I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, like if I can play seventh out of 13 athletes and I did this for fun, I'm like, I bet I can fucking win. So I set the goal. I was like, I'm going to win my show. I'm like, I'm going to win my show. I like made the declaration like, I'm going to win it. I'm going to do it, right? I'm freaking going to do it. So I got excited. I got committed. I told myself I was going to win. And not only did I tell myself I was going to win, I started telling every single person in my life that I was going to win too, which by the way was a big mistake. But I started telling every single person in my life that I was going to win. Every single person that would freaking listen. I was like, I'm going to win my show. I'm going to win my show. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to win my show. I'm going to win my show. So lo and behold, uh, the next fitness competition comes around. And the next fitness competition was about eight months away. If we're being completely fucking honest, you guys, I spent more time talking about how I wanted to win my show rather than actually doing it. Like I spent more time convincing people that I was going to win. And I spent more time explaining why I wanted to win. And I spent more time like justifying the fact that I was going to win than I did fucking working on it. And so I remember I went, uh, I registered for the second fitness competition, which by the way, was in Australia. I registered for the second fitness competition and I got on stage. And when I got on stage, I did not win. In fact, uh, there was 35 athletes and I was like number 33. So I placed like, I placed like 33 out of 35 athletes. And I remember like that plane ride home from that fitness competition, like it was yesterday. And I remember like feeling like such a fucking loser because I had just spent like months and months and months and months talking about the fact that I had wanted to win, talking about the fact that I wanted to win my pro card, talking about the fact that I was going to go to Australia, I was going to clean house. And I barely fucking placed like I'm talking like bottom, bottom of the bottom of the ranks. And the reason that it hurt so bad, it wasn't the fact that I placed 33rd. Like that was like, whatever. The reason it fucking hurt so bad is because when I looked back at like all of the actions that I used to get that 33rd place at a 35th, like the reason I got 33rd is because I was fucking lazy. Like 
I was constantly skipping cardio sessions. I was constantly skipping meals. I was drinking on the weekends. I was partying on the weekends. I was a bartender. I'd have drinks every single shift. And so the reason it fucking hurt so bad wasn't because I lost. It was because I was the reason that I fucking lost. Like it was me. Like I, like I was the one that caused that. Like I spent so much fucking time talking about all the things that I wanted to do and blabbing about the fact that I was going to win that it like removed my drive from actually doing the thing that was going to get me the win in the first place, which was the fucking work. So after that, I actually, um, that was one of the kind of sparks that caused my drug addiction, if we're being honest, because like, I, I think I've talked about that in a podcast too. It was so hard for me to accept the fact that I had just gotten smoked on stage and I like did not know how to deal with adversity and failure on that level. Because you guys, I fucking told everybody I was going to win. Like everybody at my work, everybody at the gym, everybody. I told everybody I was going to win. Just like this fucking, nah, 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 nah. And I was like beacon, beacon. And I was just not actually doing the work. So after that, I literally started partying every single weekend. I was drinking every single weekend. When I got back from Australia, I barely went to the gym. And that was when my life like started to go into shambles. So I came back from Australia. I didn't go back to work at the gym. I was selling memberships at the gym before Australia. When I came back from Australia, I quit. Well, I didn't actually quit. I think I quit. I don't remember. Um, I stopped going to the gym because I was partying all the time, basically. And then I started bartending full time. So I was bartending full time, partying on the weekends. And then I got fired from my bartending job, but I kept partying, went to another bar, kept partying, went to another bar, kept fucking partying, got fired from the last bar. And like, that was like four months later. And that's when I like hit my like rock bottom drug addiction. And so I remember like hit my rock bottom drug addiction, went away to the summer camp, started working on my vision. And when I came back from that summer camp, I told myself, I was like, okay, like I just dealt with a serious fucking adversity. I just failed on a massive scale. Not only did I fail in Australia when I competed for the WBFF, but when I came back, I also like, I came back and I got into drugs. So I was like failing on a massive level. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to fucking finish what I said I was going to do. I was like, I'm going to fucking win. And this time I'm not going to say a word. I'm just going to compete and I'm just going to put my fucking head down and I'm just going to win. So I remember the next fitness competition that I registered for. I like came back. I didn't actually register for a show right away. I told myself that I was going to win, but I didn't register right away. When I came back from that summer camp, I got a job as a restaurant manager and I wanted to get my passion for fitness back. Cause like literally you guys, I spent the entire summer running around a lake and doing pull-ups and getting sober. So when I got back from that summer camp, I basically started to work out again. And I started to get passionate about fitness again and being passionate about, about being in the gym. And after three months, it was like September, October, November, around November. That was when I decided I was like, okay, like I'm going to fucking register for the show now and I'm going to win. The next show was in March of the following year and it was in Montreal. So I registered for the show. And this time you guys, I told myself I was going to win, but I didn't fucking tell anybody else. I just kept it to myself. I was like, I'm going to win this show. I'm like, everybody's going to see I'm going to win. And I wrote it down. I actually wrote down. I think I still have this sheet of paper. I'd be, it would be cool. I'm going to find the sheet of paper. So if you guys follow me on uh, social media, I'm going to post the, the sheet of paper. But I ended up writing on uh, my New Year's resolutions for that, that January. I ended up writing down that I will place top three at, uh, at WBFF Montreal. I wrote it down on a sheet of paper as like a New Year's resolution. And so... The next show, I trained myself for the whole show. I didn't have a coach. I dieted myself. I trained myself, but I was all fucking in. Like never missed a cardio session, never missed a meal, was all in the entire time. Like was so dialed in, was so focused, was so committed. Like I was all fucking in. Like I'm talking, I was going full speed, didn't fucking touch a drop of alcohol for like 16 weeks. Like I'm talking like all in, like I, whatever it takes. And so I remember I went into that show like, like so ready, so dialed in. This was Montreal, WBFF. There was like 15 athletes on stage. I thought I was going to win, but I ended up placing second. Okay? So I ended up placing second in that show. And I remember when I placed second to that show, I remember like holding up this like silver, it was like the silver fucking second place trophy. I remember like holding up this trophy and I was like super proud of myself because I really did like give every, like there was not a, like when I looked back, on my actions that got me that second place trophy. Like there wasn't a single thing I would have done differently. Like I did everything that I fucking possibly could do. Every single thing that I could possibly have done, I fucking did it, but I got second place. So I remember like holding this trophy and I was like, I was really proud of myself because like I, I did everything I possibly could, but I was also like, this isn't fucking good enough. I want to win. And so failing at full speed for me means like I did everything in my fucking power to win that show, everything I possibly could. Never missed a meal, never missed a cardio session, was all in, whatever it takes, like every single day. So that's failing at full speed is like, I did everything I could possibly do 
everything that was in my power to win, I did. And I came up short. And so at that point, I knew that it wasn't my fault anymore that I needed to change the strategy. Like it wasn't that I needed to change my effort levels. It was that I needed to change the strategy. And that's when I hired my first uh, coach. And I told myself, when I hired that coach, I was like, coach, like I'm hiring you because I want to fucking win my next show. Like I don't want to compete in the next show. Like I want to register for the next show, which is in October. And I plan on winning that next show. So like I will do anything you tell me to do. I will pay the price. I'm, I will do whatever it takes. I'm all fucking in like, like tell me what I need to do and I will do it. It is done. So I hired that coach and the next show I entered, I won, I won that show. So what's the lesson here? What's here's what I realized. What I realized is that I think that a lot, like, I think that the reason that Australia hurts so bad is that when I look back on all my actions that led up to that show where I placed like literally bottom fucking 30, like there were so many stones that I would have like that got left unturned. There were so many things that I would have done differently. Like I shouldn't have been fucking partying. I shouldn't have been drinking. I shouldn't have been going out on the weekend. I shouldn't have been skipping my cardio sessions. I shouldn't have been eating shitty food. I shouldn't have been fucking hung over working out. Like there were so many things that I would have done differently in that show that I placed last. There were so many stones that I would have fucking turned over. And when I went to Montreal and I placed second, there was no stones left unturned. Like I did everything in my fucking power to win that show. And I still came up short and that was okay because at that point I no longer needed to change the effort level. I only needed to change the strategy. Now I have a question for you. How many stones have you left unturned? How many stones have you left unturned? Like so many of you guys are struggling to grow your online coaching business, but you're leaving fucking stones unturned. You're struggling to grow your coaching business, but you're not posting on social media three to five times a week. You're struggling to grow your coaching business, but you're not even on TikTok yet. Or you're posting on TikTok fucking three times and it didn't work and now you quit. Because in life, you guys, like, like so many of you guys are failing, not because your strategy's wrong. So many of you guys are failing because your effort level is shit. Like there's two things that success requires. Success requires a ton of effort and a good strategy, but a good strategy without a ton of effort is completely useless. And so many online coaches come into this game and they expect to make money. They see my coaches on Instagram. You know, I've helped 146 online coaches now cross $10,000 a month. So, so many coaches will come into my program. And they're like, yo, Brian, give me the fucking magic trick, bro. I'm like, I've got the strategy. Like I've got the magic trick. The magic trick is the course. It fucking works. But then they come into the course with a three out of 10 effort level. And they're like, yo, this program isn't working for me, man. And then I go to their social media and I'm like, bro, you're not doing anything I fucking tell you to do in the course. Of course, it's not working for you. Your effort level is three out of 10. How many of you guys are failing right now? because you're not going full speed. How many stones have you left unturned? I literally, I want you guys to think about the last 30 days in your online coaching business. How many times have you posted on social media? How many calls have you got on with prospects? How much time have you spent lead generating? How many TikToks have you posted in the last 30 days? How many stones have you left unturned? If you're in the 10K Coaching Academy, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper on you. How many videos have you watched from the 10K Coaching Academy? How many live streams have you tuned into from the 10K Coaching Academy? How many times have you tuned into a live stream, gotten a valuable piece of insight, and then not taken action afterwards because you were going to do it later? Leaving stones unturned. Online fitness coaches, for me, like the biggest lesson that I realized after competing in Australia and getting smoked is that I never, ever, ever want to look at the result that I have and understand that I failed because I didn't give it everything I got. I never want to look at myself in the mirror and look at myself and be like, you're the fucking reason that you're not where you want to be. Never. If I'm going to fail, I want to fail at full speed. If I'm going to fail, I want to go all in. If I'm going to fail, I want to know, I want to fail knowing I gave everything I fucking had to this thing and I still came up short and that's okay because then I can learn something different. But the truth is that so many of you guys are trying to learn new information. You're trying to learn the newest strategy and you're trying to like, what's the latest TikTok fucking hack, but you guys aren't even posting on social media. So like all of these new strategies that you're learning are going to be as useless as the old ones you were applying because you're applying these strategies with a three out of 10 effort level. And I'm asking you to fail at full speed. I'm asking you to go all in. And so many of you guys are afraid of going all in and you're afraid of failing at, at full speed because you're at, you ask yourself the question, but like, what if I fail at full speed? Like, what if I go all out? And what if I post five times a week on social media for the next fucking six months and I get no clients? Sometimes that's what it fucking takes. But at least you know you gave it your best effort. And it's almost like, I feel like a lot of people don't give it everything they have. They don't fully commit to a fitness journey. They don't fully commit to running their online business. They don't fully commit to hiring the mentor so that they can use the excuse, oh, I haven't given it my best shot yet. What a fucking cop out. 
What a cop out. How dare you rob yourself of the ability to accomplish your dreams? And you don't even know what you're fucking capable of, man. Like you don't even know what's possible because you're operating from this like mindset that I'm just going to reserve my energy and I'm just going to conserve my energy until I find the best strategy. And so I'm just not going to give my best effort to everything I have every single day because I'm just waiting for the right time or the right moment or I'm too busy or there's too many things going on or it's too hard and it's all full of shit. You're like, it's, it's shit. You're making up excuses for why you're not playing at full speed. You guys, like, if I can be 29 years fucking old, if I can be 29 years old, overcome a drug addiction, come from a trailer park, not meet my dad, own a fucking gym, make my first million at 28, like, what the fuck are you guys waiting for? Like, why are you not playing at full speed? The only thing that separates me from other people is that I give everything I have every single day to every single one of my, like, every single thing that I'm involved in, period. And there's nothing stopping you other than your own limitations that you place on yourself for what you believe is actually possible. Like, here's the craziest part, right? So I think that like a lot of you guys say you want to make $10,000 a month, right? You say you want to grow your coaching business, but how much time have you spent talking about it versus actually fucking doing it? There's this thing that I, uh, there's this idea that I came up with. This is another little kind of realization from my transition from Australia to Montreal when I actually play second is I think that a lot of us get a lot of validation from talking about the things we want to do, right? Because when you start talking about the things you want to do, this is a concept that you guys are really going to like. When you guys start talking about the things you want to do, like I want to make $10,000 a month. I want to grow my business. I want to quit my job. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do all of these amazing things. And then people in your life start validating you for it. Oh, that's amazing. Congratulations. You're going to quit your job. That's, I'm so proud of you. That's so awesome that you're going to lose 15 pounds. That's so great that this is your year. I'm so proud of you that you're going to quit smoking, basically validating you, giving you a fucking pat on the back for something you haven't done yet. And as soon as somebody gives you a pat on the back, it's almost like you get the gratification for the work that isn't done yet because you're talking about it and you're getting validation for something you haven't accomplished yet. And so what I realized competing for Montreal is by keeping my goals to myself and being fucking like relentlessly committed to accomplishing them and going all in and not doing it for the approval of you and not doing it so that I can get a pat on the back from you, but doing it so that I can prove to myself that I'm worthy, that I'm capable, that I fucking deserve it. Like that's what it takes. I got my validation from my work ethic. Here's a key to success, right? Here's a key to success. I want to share this with you guys. Your success is determined by what you do when no one's watching you. Like what do you do when the lights are off? What do you do when the cameras are off? Who are you when nobody else is looking? Who are you when, when it's just you by your fucking self in the gym, no cameras, no social media, just fucking you? Are you working? Are you putting in the effort? Who are you when your mentor isn't watching over your shoulder to see if you're posting on social media? Ghosting on social media, not posting for 30 days? Yo, that's what it takes, man. Success is what you do when no one's watching. I wanna wrap this up. This is an invitation for you to stop playing fucking small. This is an invitation for you to take those goals, those dreams, those ambitions. If you want to get to 10,000 followers on TikTok or you want to get to $10,000 a month, this is your invitation to start actually fucking going all in on those things. This is your invitation to start acting like somebody that is making $10,000 a month so that you can get yourself to that place where you're actually accomplishing it. This is your invitation to stop talking about all the things that you want to do and start actually accomplishing the things that you want to do. This is an invitation for you to increase your effort level to a 10 out of 10 so that at least you can say that you gave it everything you had to everything that you did so that if you fall short, you know that it wasn't your effort, it was your strategy. I. Right? This is your invitation to fail at full speed because anything I do in life, anything I do in life, any new venture I take on, whether that be a gym or a youth mentorship program or a new business, any new venture that I take on in life, I'm willing to fucking play the game because I'm willing to fail because I'm willing to go full speed. And if I do fail, if I do fall short of my goals, I'm going to fall short knowing that I gave everything I had to that venture that I tried to do. And I invite you to do the same. Because oftentimes you're going to find that you're going to break through to levels of success that you never even knew were possible. It's almost like when you understand that you're like willing to fail and you're willing to go, you're willing to go all in to fail at this like venture that you're going after. It's almost like as soon as you become like you just embrace it and you're like, I'll fucking fail and I'll do whatever it takes. Like I'll pay the price. It's almost like as soon as you just accept that failure is a part of the process and you might fail. It's almost like you just break through to this level of success that was like previously unavailable to you because you haven't been playing at full speed, but you'll never experience that until you get your effort levels to a 10 out of 10. All right? That's it. That's all. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Change Lives Make Money Online Trainer Podcast, the number one show for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow a successful online business. If you got value 
from this episode and you want to win a thousand dollars cash, all you need to do is screenshot any podcast episode, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at bmarkfit. Let me know that you're tuning in. Just by doing that, you're automatically entered to win a thousand dollars cash. Peace, love, and protein, guys. Have the best day ever, and we'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Let's go. Online Fitness Coach, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the number one podcast for online fitness coaches. If you're getting value to the podcast and you want to work closely with me and my team to scale your fitness business and learn how to go online, what I want you to do is go to my Instagram, at bmarkfit, and DM me with the words 10K Academy. Our mission is to make elite business coaching affordable for every single personal trainer on the market, and we want to give you the tools, strategies, and tactics that some of our best clients are using to thrive right now in the online training landscape. So go to my Instagram, at bmarkfit, and DM me with the words 10K Academy and me and you can have a chat on whether or not I can help you scale your fitness business online.